Just want to let you lot know that if you're watching this clip on the Fozcast YouTube channel, the full episode is now available to watch exclusively on Spotify. And it's free. Come on. Another thing, like when I remember when they got relegated, you got bought by obviously Sheffield United, and then he gets relegated again and gets bought by Arsenal. Yeah. yeah. But like, I remember at the time, all the fans and stuff, what are they buying him for? He's got relegated. He took them down. And I'm thinking, you <laughs> dickheads. Like, he obviously didn't take them down. He's playing in a team that the team couldn't quite stay up, kind of thing. It's nothing to do with the goalkeeper. So if, if, you're, if you're a busy goalkeeper, you know, in the Premier League, so you're yeah. kind of towards the bottom of the league, you're having a lot of shots peppered at you and stuff does that make you potentially stand out then because you're busy and if you're a good goalkeeper it did for him look yeah, at him what he's did and um, it summed up for me the other day we uh, a few few days ago we played Leeds and Melier and they're, they're struggling at the moment yeah. they've got eight first team players yeah. right? but they're having a tough moment we had 11 shots in the first half wow on target that's the most I think yeah. oh, I saw the stat actually it's the yeah. most in the first Half of a game since they have started doing records. So really, so it's really. Like 2003 or something. Yeah, yeah. And he was making save after save, and I was at the other end watching it, and I'm thinking, this was me last year. How old's Melier, by the way? He's only you're, like 19. Yeah, you're, you're below 20, me. 20, so 20, 22. 22. Yeah. yeah. Wow. He's massive, isn't he? How oh, long is he? So tall. He's long. He's everything's so long. String but he's got a massive long head. Everything like. <laughs> but I'm there thinking that was me last year. Yeah. And yeah. obviously he's done it. He, he had the, his, a great season last year, so he's gone. He's gone the other way. It's yeah. like Melier can't do anything wrong. Like, I know. No, like, but because I got relegated and then I was in a team which were doing poorly, it was like even though I was saving six or seven shots, Don't matter. two were going in. It it's was your like, fault. No, not good. You're enough, like the poison chalice, basically. Yeah. They've signed you again, and because yeah. like you got relegated last year, you're going to do it the same again from this mm. year. It's a load of crap, man. Yeah. And how was that? How was that going back? So obviously Sheffield United sold you, mm. and then and what we're talking. What, three years later? Three and a half years. Three yeah, and a half think, years yeah. later, you go back for 18 odd million quid. Is that Jesus, a bit- mate, hold on. We're talking about 50 odd million quid for transfer fees there, you know. Come on. <laughs> Some signing on fees there, isn't there? 50 mil. <laughs> what? First Only 23? Years. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> the first few years were just going on loan. got relegated every year as well. Just <laughs> 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 oh mate it's bonkers I love it though it's class I remember when uh, we'll talk about Arsenal in a minute obviously but um, I remember when you signed and again straight away you see people going oh, he's just got relegated what are we spending 30 million on a goalkeeper we don't even need a goalie we've got a decent goalkeeper soon changed that did soon change that did mate it's like um, we, we were looking at the stats earlier so you played 14 games so far yeah 14 15 15, 15 yeah 15 games game. right so you played 15 um, Arsenal games so far you're about that close to being a hero at the club already, mate, isn't it? It's how it's bonkers. It literally couldn't have gone any better, could it? No. Um, no, and they, they said to me straight away, they said they'd done the same thing as what Bournemouth did, where it's we haven't got a number one or number two. Yeah. But it might take you a year, it might take you six months to really? get into, Is that the, what they said, into yeah. the team. Yeah. Thankfully for me, it took three weeks. Yeah, was that, was was that yeah. a big decision for you when you look at your age and you, you're established, but then you look at Arsenal and say, it's Arsenal, it's a no-brainer. Or did you kind of think, oh, it's a bit of a gamble because I might not be number one? No. Nah. What was your attitude there? If it was any other season, and it, my attitude would have been that, where I'm, I'm looking, thinking it's a bit of a gamble. This time I was just like, after the two years I've had, yeah. I was like, no, I'm getting... I ain't getting I'm, relegated I'm, I'm there. Getting, yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll go, I'll go, I can't do the treble. I'll, yeah, I'll go there. I'll go there and buy my time and believe in my ability. Like, I'm not... I wasn't... I'd have happily played in the championship. Um, but there's a lot of things at Sheffield United behind the scenes which wasn't going very well and obviously they had the manager sacking a few yeah, weeks yeah. ago so you could see that in pre-season it was going to be a difficult year yeah yeah. It, I think and they might they might go up but and it wasn't me sort of uh, hiding away from a challenge but it was just me looking at it thinking right well it's Arsenal I'll go there and even if I don't play for a year, year and a half, there's a plan there for me. Um, and then it was me looking at if they get into Europe, I looked at their stats of the goalkeepers who, who played, played. Yeah, you'd play some in there. And it was the number twos had the Carabao Cups, the FA Cups and the Europa League yeah. until sort of the later rounds unless you'd done really well. So I knew there'd be games for me. Um, but thankfully for me, but the, the team obviously started poorly and got myself in and, 
in quicker than before. But I think I think the thing is as well though, you I don't think anybody can begrudge you that move. Even like the the most hardest Sheffield United fan couldn't be begrudge you that move because everybody won didn't they mm. they got an absolute monster payout for it 30 mil you get your move to Arsenal it's it's a no-brainer isn't it it's an absolute win-win all over the shop so when when you first got wind that Arsenal were interested and they were talking about certain amounts of money and all that kind of stuff your phone must have been blowing right up right yeah the, the very first time I knew about the interest was uh the pre-camp before the Euros yeah in Middlesbrough okay. um so you were with England at that point. So yeah. you were fourth shot. You were the fourth was, goalie. Yeah, yeah, you were the fourth goalie. Yeah, that was the before the the squad was the announced, Euros yeah. behind Dino Jordan and um, Sam. Yeah, Sam. Yeah. So I was there, and that's when I got the wind that it was they were interested in looking at me and stuff. And um, to be honest, they were they Arsenal were I want to say respectful, but I don't know if that is the case. But they were respectful because when I got into the squad, they basically backed off and said. Uh, that's your time now. Yeah, Go and enjoy. That, do everything yeah. you want with them. I had a few phone calls here and there with with the manager, and every time I spoke to him, it was just like I was on the phone to my agent, get it done, like yeah, try and do anything yeah. you can. And then, um, and then the the numbers which were getting thrown out, I was just it was a couple of times where I lost my head, and it was just like, how can someone be saying forty million for? Yeah. I was doing the fan thing, relegated, 40 yeah, million. Yeah, yeah. It don't make sense. Don't, but don't add up that. Don't make sense. You brought me for this. Yeah. Um, when you say that, what you mean is basically you think Sheffield United are asking an awful lot yeah. of money here, basically. I, I this, is, this is a big opportunity mm, for me and they're asking a huge amount of money here, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. And I understand, obviously, if I was to leave, they wanted to get someone else in and the market wasn't that wide at that time. So yeah. I was like, I understand you want to keep me, but at some point it's got to be... Yeah. A level playing field where they give you enough money to, for you to make profit, but you've got to understand my yeah your where side I want to well. go exactly. When you and sign- also, not only that, the the effect as well. If that would have all caved in and like wouldn't have happened, you, th- I'm not saying you would because you're not that kind of guy. But there's some players that would just that's them gone. Mm. You would lose them mentally. They would not re- they would not even try a leg. I've seen outfield players do it. They haven't got that move to a big club to a dream whatever it could be. Yeah. And it's all caved in, hasn't happened, and they've just disappeared after that. Why? Why aren't buyout clauses more more commonplace in contracts? For goalies, is I, I don't know why why it would be necessary because it's difficult. Normally, with a keeper, you, you're there for a long time, aren't yeah, you? It's you very are. very rare that you're there for a year. Yeah, you Two don't years. get many fancy moves as a goalie, you know. No, you don't. <laughs> you've, they're they're you've, literally normally the first ones to get done, yeah. and then that's yeah, it. yeah. You said because not, players want their goalie settled yeah, yeah, and then, into the team, and then you're hoping in there there for the next six, seven years, yeah. And then you you end up you, you you're looking for gems more than anything. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, as goalies. Yeah. So the so the like the Mendy one for Chelsea, for, for example. What? I'm going to be honest, I've never heard of him. No, thirty mil. And but even that is a it's a gem. It is. Yeah. If you can spend thirty, if you're any one of these big boys, right, and you can spend thirty million pounds on a goalkeeper, and that goalie does it, and I mean like ticks all the boxes, does everything, kicks it well, crosses, saves everything. Thirty millions a snip. Mm. I even think when Allison bought uh, Liverpool bought Allison, by the way, for whatever it was, eighty ninety million, yeah. It's a guaranteed, though. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. It guaranteed, doesn't matter yeah. what the money was. It's a guaranteed. Yeah. And there's not many goalies in the Premier League, not many teams, sorry, that have got that guaranteed goalie. And also the 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 buyout clause for, for an Allison, uh, if we use him for an example, there's not many places better than where no. he's at. No. Yeah. There's not many could buy him either. No. There's not many could... Th- Two or three in the world. No, yeah. there is. That's exactly so that. You wouldn't need... You could... you If you're Liverpool, you could just demand... That and if you can pay it, pay it. If you can't, well, exactly, it's yeah. not for sale. But going back to the, yeah, the, it got to the point of me asking, basically saying, I understand where you're coming from, but I this is what I want to do. And they said we won't stand in your way if a bid comes on of of whatever. And there was bids coming on, and um, they were turning them down. And I was like, look, you said this, just said, yeah. And they were like, but we don't make. And they were making these numbers up saying, if we sell you for this and we have to pay Bournemouth back all in one go now, so we only have this amount of profit. Um, so it went on and I got told the day of a, a game that another bid's come in and I decided to play. So Sheffield knew that. And then after the game, they rejected it. And I was like, oh, come on. Um, so they've like... Won't, they're, won't, name, won't name names. I don't so know. I don't. I hope my agent doesn't see this. I might get in trouble, but... 
um, won't name a name, but we asked, we said, well, if normally if you don't get your move, you are rewarded with a new contract. A new contract. Yeah. That is, yeah. it's not set in stone, but that but it's is standard. Yeah. It's normal. Especially as a younger player, especially as a younger player. Yeah. So you've seen it at Brentford with Ollie Watkins when yeah. he didn't move and stuff like that. So we said that. And someone at the football club, won't name names, said, we didn't ask him to take less money when he was conceding goals at the start of last year. Oh, shut up. <laughs> oh my so God. That, no. that was when I basically went, right, well, well no, I'm not. I, I won't play. That comes principle then. Mm, yeah. I won't. I won't play against West Brom for a game of season. I won't play. Um, do what you want. And then What's within, wrong with people? Uh, and then I didn't train for the first two days. So the Monday, Tuesday, and the manager was like, "No, he'll be all right. He'll play." Blah blah. Tuesday came and I was like, "No, I'm not playing." Like, um, and then Wednesday, the team news comes out that I'm not in the squad. And then within. 45 minutes, so about 10 minutes before kickoff, I was on my way down. Really, yeah. yeah. That's it. They'd had to, they realised. So, yeah, they so they were playing a game then, basically. Yeah, they yeah. were trying to play a game, yeah, trying to keep you keep you going, keep him going, get him to play the games, and then he'll he hopefully just sort of forget about it. This is where it, fans kind of sometimes take umbrage with it, don't they, and go, they're contracted, they've got to play, and it's the, but it's the game, it's a game on both parts, isn't yeah. it? Mm. Ultimately, they're, they're forcing your hand, I said, I said to him from the start, I said, I'll more than happy play you know I'm going to try my best for the football club. And if I don't go, if they don't put the money up, then I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. I'm ready to do it. I brought a house there. I'm here. But then when you start saying one thing about if a substantial big comes in and then turning it down, yeah. there's got to be a middle ground. And then um, when that comment got made, it was like, Oof, that's nah, principle, it's mate. So it's, but they're just, they're, they're, that we really talk about works me. Talk about players throwing it and stuff and men, mental... Uh, like, could you could throw it, but then mentally you could easily go as well. Massively, mate. Massively. But the I've, stress of that transfer. Yeah, like, I've seen it. Like, remember, yeah. remember Sado Barahino? Uh, I got psoriasis um, from that transfer. Did you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. All the pure stress of it, kind mm. of thing. Pure stress. It, it came on in about two days. Joking. For me saying I'm not playing, to it happening. Wow, way, mate. Mental. I've- Thanks everybody for watching. We hope you enjoyed this clip of the Fozcast. If you would like to watch the full episode, it is now available exclusively on Spotify for free.